All right, so what's going on YouTube? So right now we're about to leave work. Um, we're gonna do the drive, it's about an hour home. So stick around, watch the drive real quick in a quick time lapse, and then let's get home and let's get to work. going on YouTube happy episode 2 this is gonna be week 2 of my race car journey and you're about to get to meet the, the Subaru we're gonna do a quick oil change on the Subi we're gonna get that knocked out and then we're gonna get back to race car um, so far race car no update we haven't done anything yet we still need to vacuum inside of the race car that's gonna be a lot of fun stick around like and subscribe let's get to it oh, I got my gloves on um, what else I got tools outside I'm already I just already pulled out the oil um, the oil filter we're gonna cut that open and check to see if there's any residue in there any little metal pieces because I did just rebuild that engine so we're gonna check that see how that's doing and let's check the sous life <laughs> quick sneak peek at the Subi engine. Um, I don't have AC right now because I got the pump. Uh, I, got a, I got a fresh pump, a uh, fresh alternator. I have a um, Weapon R intake. Um, the, the only reason the stock intercooler is um, wrapped is because I was testing. I wanted to see if this gold wrap actually um, pushed away heat. And as it turns out, it actually works because I have a Tomioka Racing 16G. Um, and that produces quite a bit of heat and turns out I actually run cooler with the gold on it so I have the STI intercooler that I will be putting in up here and that'll be here pretty soon you guys will get to join me on that and then we're also gonna powder coat these uh, intake runners red Subi red so that way we'll have red hoses red intercooler or I'm sorry um, gold intercooler gold intake with the red powder coated uh, intake runners, so that'll be cool. So all right, let's change the soil synthetic oils and we're running Rotella yes basic suit bro 5w40 so as you can see we label how many miles on the chassis of course because we don't know the exact engine miles once you've swapped the engine, you just have what's on the dash, so you put that on there. We're gonna write on this one. All right, so step two is we're getting a little bit of oil out of the fresh oil, and we're gonna put it on the rubber seal. I don't know if you can see that. And we're trying to get a good seal on that. And then we're gonna pour some oil into the new filter. All right, YouTube, so that was the oil change. Right now, I'm gonna show you, that's the oil right there, and then I have the oil filter, oh, right here. So, here's the oil filter. We're gonna crack open the oil filter, and we're gonna run a magnet through the oil, and we're gonna check to see if there's any metal shavings, any metal particle, if there is, how much. Hopefully there isn't, and there's very minute, like, virtually nothing and that'll be best case scenario so let's get to it first time i saw you i knew all the time it was something in the air the night Alright, so 
so what's the deal? Well, I was mentioning that the difference between a quality filter and a cheap filter is the bypass. So let's just say, for whatever reason, you had this substrate of the filter element here completely plugged, there has to be an effective way to get oil in your engine because having dirty oil is better than having no oil. And so this is worst case scenario. So worst case scenario, let's just say your Joe Blow that does not change your oil frequently and your filter actually somehow plugs up in this substrate area. There's a bypass that are built into these higher end filters that will actually collapse and allow oil to continue to be flowed through the engine. And what were you saying about the inside of here? These uh, more expensive ones, I don't know if you could see the, let me get a light for you. <clears throat> you can see there's the spring for the bypass valving. And then there's the, um, like a steel backing to keep. It's all perforated and stuff. Right, that backing, what it does, as the RPM raises naturally, you're gonna need more flow, the pumps working more, so it's creating a low pressure in this area, sucking the oil into the, um, into the engine. So as that happens, the last thing you want is the filter to collapse on itself and create a restriction. So they build these um, reinforced areas so that you don't collapse the filter on itself and you can continue to flow oil through the system. All right, so what's our recent discovery? Well, this is the O-ring so we don't get dirty oil from the small holes going in through the main filtered area. So what we just saw here is this area here is like an o-ring fit so this goes in this area here and then this part this larger diameter hole now forces itself against that area and that seals the intake of the filter from the outlet so you don't just bypass through the hole straight that way and back into the engine this way you force the oil through here Go through the pleats and then out the center. Cool design. Oh, there is a steel mesh behind these. So, now that we got it all apart, now you can see what you're actually filtering. There is a little bit of debris showing. But now you pull out the pleats and now you could see what exactly is it going through this filter. This will now give us an indication as to do we have an issue we need to address or we need to figure out if that is hardened material or if it's non-ferrous. That's non-ferrous, that's ferrous, anything that attracts but a lot of this is also from this steel backing. Oh, okay. Those little this metal wire cutting mesh. It? Yes. Okay. See, look, the mesh attracts. Okay. <clears throat> so we need to discount a lot of that mesh. I don't know, this could possibly be some aluminum or some of the lead flashing on the bearings. Naturally, lead is non-magnetic, so is also aluminum non-magnetic. So that would be your non-ferrous materials. Ferrous materials is magnetic, which is your, uh, what is it, um, mild steel, black steels, your stainless steels, and some alloys. So let's see if any of this stuff attracts to the magnet. So well, that stuff doesn't pick up. Well, there's definitely some abnormal wear for sure, but I'm not picking anything up that is 
a ferrous material, nothing hardened. So that'll exclude your cams, the followers, all oh, those are hardened surfaces. Uh, your pistons are aluminum. Your rods are also aluminum. Those are, no, that's non-ferrous non material. Aluminum is a non-ferrous material. On your main bearings or rod bearings, you have the tin backing and the tin backing does not bind to lead or excuse me to copper so there has to be a nickel um, uh, layer so there from the tin you have the nickel layer from the nickel layer now you can now um, transfer the copper so the copper bonds to the to the bearing from the copper then you have your lead and the lead is for embeddability and then there's a very thin tin flashing that goes over the lead so those are your layers within that uh, in within your bearing so <clears throat> where I'm talking about that you may get non ferrous materials is one from the bearing itself the aluminum block or the head itself something is actually milling the block what I mean by milling the block is an area where there's a rotational um, effect happening it could be rubbing and shaving the non-ferrous aluminum or in this case with the uh, aluminum heads you have your steel um, cams that can also create non-ferrous debris because as we can see we cannot magnetize this material that we see within the stuff that does get magnetized is the braid where did I put that this is the backing as I cut the filter open this is where you get all the little uh, debris that I'm actually picking up but the actual shiny cannot be picked up nope this is still part of that backing you can see it's like a little piece of hair but still I'm not able to pick this debris up so this is how you inspect your filter as to what's being filtered through it is by actually taking your filters apart not everyone does this but if you love your engine and you want to prevent catastrophic damage you inspect the filter. This is 5,000 miles after the rebuild so we can catch things early enough so this is all part of the filter. This goes underneath the filter just like that and this is what pushes it from the base of the filter. It pushes this area up into the inlet and outlet area. So these are your inlets and this is the, excuse me, yeah, the inlet for uh, hot oil coming through here. Clean filter oil coming out the center. Which is why you have your bypass here. Because all the filter is doing is actually funneling the uh, oil from these holes. It comes through the outside of the filter and the filter goes, excuse me, the oil goes through the filter, which is why you see all of this debris on the outside versus the inside of the pleats. And you don't want to see any debris on the inside because that means it's not filtering. All right, YouTube, so that's going to be it for today. It was real quick. I had to run some errands today, so that kind of killed my time. I went and bought the oil, the filter. Also went and got my hair cut for the week. So... Right now, this is going to be the end of Tuesday. I'll see y'all here on Wednesday. Let's go.